How do you think of a time when you have been working on something where you have genuinely felt, right, this is definitely me. This is definitely the sort of thing I should be doing. I'm definitely in the right place, doing the right kind of job. And I can actually now see, I can see the way forward. You may even have been stuck for a while, but you can actually just see, ah, I can see the kind of future that we can go down. I can see the kind of future we can create. Can anyone think of situations like that? What I think is that theory do is joins the dots. And if anybody wants to pick up some of the stuff here, it's Peter Sangley's stuff, it's Joaskia's stuff on synchronicity, um, Kahane's stuff, David White's stuff. Um, and in fact, the stuff we're talking about this morning is Otto Sharma. He's the guy who put Theory and you together. The key thing is all these people work together. And it's a point we've made several times when we talk about leadership. Who are leaders? Who are leaders? And again, this approach I think takes, I think they've got it right. A leader is not somebody who has a position in the hierarchy. You are a leader because you're now a level three manager. Um, no way. You are a leader. It doesn't matter what organisation you're in. It doesn't matter what position you have in the organisation. You are a leader because you are actually able and you are willing and you, you can see the future. And you are the sort of person that can create a future. And that can mean in a very small scale sense, it can mean very big picture stuff. I've got here um, just about again who are leaders, certainly not just people in positions of hierarchical authority and, and not people who are stuck in past patterns of thinking and behaviour. And this is one of the key things about making this kind of leadership breakthrough is realising that we are all to some extent prisoners of, of ourselves, we are all prisoners of where we come from, we all have. Um, um, you know, we, we all have our own views, our own thinking, and it's when you can actually say, right, what we are now going to do is make a dramatic shift, if not completely junk previous thinking, and actually look at the possibility of, of a different future. And, and I think one of the things that's really key to talk about with theory is what Sharma talks about our blind spot. Um, and what, what he's talking about there, which I think is really interesting, is that place that we don't go to. Um, it's, it's when, what we tend to do, I think, at work, is we just rush about and we get things done. And then as soon as something's done, we find something else to do. And then we get on and we do that. And then sometimes after that, we look, go back and look at our strategic plan and say, oh, gosh, yes, we've done it. We've done it well. We may have done it, we may not have done it, we may have invented it, we've done it. Um, but the, the key thing is, do we actually go to what he calls our inner place, our blind spot? And this is where you're going way beyond the usual realm of what leadership is, because what he's saying is there's two elements to that. A clear understanding of who you are. You know, who are you? Are you actually the person in the right place doing the right thing? Are you, do you know who you are? Have you connected with yourself? And if you have connected with yourself, the second question is, are you doing the right thing? So this is quite interesting, isn't it? How often do we go to our inner place and think about ourselves as leaders in terms of, well, who is me? Who is this authentic self? Because what this, 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 this approach argues is that's actually the key to leadership. The key is actually understanding who you are authentically and actually being quite clear, well, what is my work? Now, actually, if you, you look at all, all major religions, and I'll tell you this, they will ask you that question as well. They will ask you that question, you know, what Christianity will say, what are your talents? Um, and, and are you using them in the way that you should be using them? And for lots of people who go on, I think I've made this point a couple of times, is that they go on these very expensive leadership programs, which are, I'm sure, wonderful, but this is some of the questions they're asked, and you know what? They come back and they resign. They do. There's a huge, huge dropout rate um, from spending 10 or 12,000 going on these, these big courses. Um, and the reason is because people come back and say, why am I, you know, the under-manager product development in a tyre factory? Because in fact, that's not what I want to be. I think the interesting thing about public services you actually do come across an awful lot of people who can say, who is, you know, who, who am I and what is my work? And they're fervent about what they're doing. I was doing some work at the Department of Conservation recently, and this is what these people live for. You know, they get up in the morning and they are thinking, 
you know, dolphins and terrestrial this. And, and it's about, there's this little diagram here, which is the U, by the way. This is the U. He's got various U diagrams. There isn't just one, but this is his U. So it doesn't mean that everything starts with the U. It's one of the to right? say. Um, so if we actually tangle ourselves down this U, we get an understanding, in a sense, of one aspect of what you say. First of all, what he talks about is downloading. What we tend to do, usually if you go into a meeting, you can't vaguely aware of the, the, the statue and the tape, which is the statue you've always taken because that's what you do in your unit and you've always had this view and you've always had a meeting and the other people come up with their view and nobody makes any progress at all because everyone's just in fact putting their point of view. And that's fine. So you're downloading where you are and you're seeing, and you're seeing what he calls with this open mind. In other words, the open mind can be IQ. Now, there's nothing wrong in having a high IQ and being able to think logically, thinking strategically, and thinking in straight lines. And it's so interesting when you, you know, most organisations, that's where they're at, isn't it? I'm not saying most people in organisations, but most organisations. Again, you look at any restructure that goes on that I've ever come across, the process is linear and logical. This is what we need to achieve. We will interview people, we will come up with a structure, we will consult. Uh, but in fact, um, what you often won't do is connect with this second level here, what he calls the open heart. In other words, this sensing, actually picking up what people are really feeling. And again, in one organisation I've worked in recently, big restructure, big reorganisation going on. And my session was all the touchy bit, so I didn't imagine, you know, about looking after yourself during this period of change. And guess what? All of the discussion was about. Not one word was about the, 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 the IQ stuff. Is you know what is the logical future for this organisation? It was all around the EQ, the open heart stuff. Is what the hell does this mean to me? People's fears, people's you know in some cases people's absolute paranoia, people's real distress. What he then talks about is letting go of the past. Now, it's a, it's, it's an e they're four easy words to say, aren't they? Letting go of the past. And but how often do we do it? You know, our inheritance, and that, that's a big word, but our inheritance is just so vast, isn't it? In terms of one, who we are, two, in terms of the inheritance of organisations. I mean, putting it bluntly, we've always done it like this. Actually trying to make a change and realise that, in fact, if you're going to create a new future, you need to let go of the past. I think the contrast to those individuals are organisation. And I, I just despair sometimes at the, the whole culture of a lot of our organisations because I wonder whether they move past the first level. I wonder whether they move past just the kind of, you know, here is our strategic plan, here are our outputs, and, and it's almost that sort of robotic quality. Um, to the way organisations operate. I think some of them do operate at that second level with very much that, the sensing with the open heart, with that kind of, you know, let's actually embrace, um, if you like, embrace the idea that the world is not a straight line, but the world is actually incredibly messy like this, and we need to take that into account. But I wonder how many organisations actually work, operate from that third level. And here we are. The first thing is suspending your habitual judgments. Um, your past patterns of behaviour and your past assumptions. Um, and that's so hard, you know, because we are who we are. Um, but, you know, it's so interesting when you, if again, you go to that inner space, you go to that, that blind spot, you may discover all sorts of things about yourself that you hadn't known before. Um, and, and certainly adversity uh, may well help you find those as well. Um, so the second thing is, is that realise there is a world beyond our patterns of downloading. In other words, that what we tend to see is just a very narrow version of the world. You know, everything we see is so, 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 so small. And that ability to realise, and the word patterns is absolutely crucial, that it isn't just about a series of different straight lines you can follow, but what patterns, what patterns can you see um, that are actually an emerging picture. You can actually see a possibility of something quite different than there's been in the past. You know, the world is changing so quick, isn't it? You know, if we are just going to carry on, and you take New Zealand, if we just carry on doing the same thing we've always done, economically and whatever, where are we going to be? Nowhere. You know, these kind of ideas, I think, are really relevant to us here. You know, as a small nation, attempting to, and not doing too badly on the whole, but operating on, on that world stage.